Hello guys and welcome back to the series, welcome back to Football Manager 2023 with me your host Dean and welcome back to our epic quest across Europe to win the top flight division in each of the European nations in the game. It's 33 in total, we're in nation number 32 on our list, we're into the final two which you may know from the last episode is in fact Spain where we are the manager of Real Madrid. At that stage of our careers now 69 years into the future where we can pretty much walk into any job we are a world-class manager as you may know by now now last time out we kicked off our La Liga campaign we're a quarter of the way through that season now we've played a total of nine games in total so today we're back for two fixtures the first of which is against Levante the second of which is against Barcelona so possibly the biggest game of the season it is at Camp Nou I think if that's still their stadium, we'll find out. But let's have a quick run through what's happened since you're last with us. Now, we've had no incomings in the transfers. As you know, uh, we, we're massively over the wage budget. We have let a couple more people go. Callum Perry has gone to Tottenham. I uh, got £450,000 off the books, which was uh, really, really good. The rest have sort of been loans, small fees and stuff like that. I put all the remaining transfer budget into the wage budget. That still only got me to £6.4 million. And I managed to get the wage expenditure down to eight million pounds a week. So we're still 1.6 million over, but we were 2.4 million over. So I have reduced it by 800,000 uh, pounds. But as a result, you can see that the club do, in fact, lose a lot of money on a monthly basis. It's it, it's astronomical. It, it, so if we're on the 31st, so we'll say 24 million pounds a month uh, that we are losing. Obviously, commercial revenue stuff like that for, for teams like Real Madrid is absolutely massive but let's have a run through what happened since you were here that opening day of the game in the season against uh, Valencia at the Mestalla that 1-0 win next up with uh, Athletic Club Bill Bau I believe this is Jose Diaz Saul Vaidman and Simin Simiga with the goals in this one for a very very comfortable 4-0 win 36 shots with 20 on target we were absolutely fantastic unfortunately the next game the Madrid derby did end in defeat for us and it was quite disappointing we didn't have a single shot on target in the entire game it was at the uh, Estadio, Estadio Metropolitano in obviously away at Atleti's stadium uh, and they were just much much better than us and we did lose 1-0 unfortunately one of our former players getting the man of the match Eric Heyman uh, who we had at Benfica who is still an absolutely fantastic player at 34 years old yeah, it was, uh, it was quite disappointing, really, uh, to, to, to lose the game. But we did bounce back immediately against Real Betis, and it was a 4-0 win. Jose Diaz with three goals. Sal Vaidman on the score sheet again. Another really, really good performance from a Real Madrid point of view. Into the Champions League, we went against Sporting. A 3-0 win, which was absolutely fantastic. But back to league action, it was Celta Vigo. And they came to the Santiago Bernabeu and were absolutely hammered 6-0. Jose Diaz getting four in this one. Sal Vaidman and Simon Semeger again. 42 shots in total. Uh, you can see just how badly the Celta Vigo players did play. Followed it up against Getafe away from home. A 2-1 victory. You can see by the match stats we absolutely battered us. But the board expectation for this game was a draw and I couldn't understand why because Hatafe uh, they're quite low down the, uh, the, the, the the league predictions and we're obviously still finish, predicted to finish at the top of the table and I couldn't understand why a draw was the expected result particularly when you look at the match stats and how dominant we were in the game uh, but it was Sal Vaidman and Rafael Nequeza getting the goals Nequeza has been sort of repurposed in a few of the games as an attacking uh, sorry as an advanced forward for us in our system and he's done exceptionally well which we're going to see going into the next couple of games absolute humdinger of a game at the Arsenal Stadium a 4-3 defeat Jose Diaz getting a hat-trick uh, Arsenal went 2-0 uh, up we got it back to 2-2 before conceding through Carlos Alvarez we then scored again through Jose Diaz to make it 3-3 but we gave away a penalty just two minutes later uh, and we're unfortunately beaten 4-3 by Arsenal which was was highly highly disappointing but back to league action, Villarreal away from home, 4-1. Santiago Sola, Rafael Nequeza and Juan Camillo de, uh, Duarte uh, getting all the goals in this one. Again, we've registered over 20 shots at goal. And it was a similar story against Alaves. Again, 25 shots at goal. This time it was Nequeza and Vaidman getting the goals. It was uh, The scoreline didn't really reflect how dominant we were. 
we struggled to put the ball in the back of the net for whatever reason in this game. Champions League wise, it was Porto 6 0 against Porto. Nequeza getting a hat trick. Daniel, Benjamin Tuss, and Manu Herrera on the score sheet. Absolutely thumped Porto. I was quite shocked by the scoreline, to be honest. And then most recently in the league, we've taken on Cartagena at the Bernabal. Uh, Rafael Nequeza and Santiago Sola with the goals. Again, 35 shots on target. So, in terms of La Liga, we are currently sat at the top of the table. We do, by three points, we do have a game in hand over Valencia as well. But our closest rivals, believe it or not, so far this season, this season uh, have been Espanyol. They are on the same amount of games played by us. Yes, they're five points behind us. But that win, if they win that game in hand over Valencia, will take them a point ahead of Valencia, which is quite surprising. Now, Barcelona do have a game in hand over us as well. So you could technically say that they're on 20 points because they're more likely... Uh, to win that but we've had a, a very very good start to the season and we do find ourselves in a good position Ma Atleti Madrid uh, have already lost four games which is quite surprising uh, particularly when they beat us as well it, it's even more surprising but we're in a good place so far in La Liga you can see our goal difference as well is absolutely uh, fantastic we're only losing that one game uh, to Atleti Madrid you can see we've got the top scorers in the league all three of them top assisters player of the match awards for, for Saul Vaidman Again, average ratings, we, we're, we're the best team in the league, basically, let's let's put it that way. Today's game, as I said, is away to Levante. They currently find themselves in 14th position in the league uh, on 12 points, which is, is not too bad for a team like Levante. And we're going to get straight into that game. Uh, and we're going to have a look at the lineup that we've picked for today's game. And it is going to be Frender in goal. Now, he has made some errors, just like he did when he was at Feyenoord uh, with us. And the reason we sold him to Real Madrid. And these errors came in the game against Arsenal. Jumping underneath crosses. Not being on his line when he should be. Stuff like that. And it's exactly the reason I sold him at Feyenoord. So potentially. Particularly when he's on £400,000 a week. Could look to sell him in the winter. And bring in a, another goalkeeper. I'm sure I can find a, a, a world class Belgian goalkeeper. Because we've had a few of those in this save. But uh, yeah. Julian Frender. Uh, yeah, he's living up to, to the reputation that we know he's got because he's done it for us before. But he's going to continue in goal for now. It's going to be Ribeiro uh, as the right back. Miguel Ribeiro, a 34-year-old Frenchman. Decent right back. Happy to see him play. Semiga in the centre of defence. He's got two goals so far this season. He's done exceptionally well. 31-year-old Croatian. Alongside him is going to be uh, Eliza Banda, who was on his way out of the club. We did accept a bid for him. Uh, the former RB Salzburg man did accept a bid for him but he turned down the contract so here he is and he's actually getting some game time as well he's the 31 year old Mexican uh, and left back today is going to be Tush Benjamin Tush uh, moves over to the left today it's a position that he's more than comfortable in all four of our defensive unit there over the edge of 30 though Badiola is the defensive midfielder for today again a position that he's, he's more than comfortable at playing in another one 30 plus Hurtado 31, uh, very, very good defensive midfielder. We know him from our RB Salzburg. And alongside him in the defensive midfield role is going to be Juan Camillo Duarte. Again, he's had a, a, another very, very good season. Left wing is going to be Nequeza. Like I said, he has played a few games up front this season. And he has got nine goals and five assists in his 10 appearances. Now that he's back to full fitness, he's done very, very well for us. On the right-hand side is going to be Lara. Uh, Carlos Lara, a 24-year-old Spaniard. Possibly a bit of a fringe player, but again, we're rotating squad. Uh, things like that with the amount of game time that we do have. Uh, so Sol Vaidman, who is currently 35 years old, 36 years old. Uh, he's, he's resting his legs a little bit. And then up top, it is going to be Jose Diaz. Uh, again, 12 goals in nine appearances so far this season. He's had a fantastic season so far. So that's the lineup today, guys. Let's get into the game against Levante. So we're underway in the first couple of minutes here. It is a Real Madrid highlight. It's Badiola with the ball, looking for Diaz, was sort of fired at him and he, he struggled to control it, but Schemiger picks up the ball, finds Duarte, comes back to Banda, Schemiger again, striding forward, looks over the top towards Jose Diaz, brings it down on his chest, forced a little bit wide though, can he cut back, he can, gets it back to Fernando Hurtado, with his first goal of the season, and we're three minutes and 15 seconds into this game, and it is 1-0 to Real Madrid already. Approaching 20 minutes in now, we get our second highlight of the game. It is a Levante goal kick, which we do win in the midfield through Badiola. It finds Lara. Tatada, the goal scorer, finds Duarte. He's got Nequeza out on the left-hand side. Looking for Diaz. It was uh, 
a little bit optimistic though. Morales did cut it out, but the goalkeeper's just given it straight back to us with Ribeiro. The Frenchman coming forward needs some support. He's got Lara. Lara comes back inside, finds Schemiger. Schemiger looking to switch the play to the other side, finds Duarte instead. Now Banda, got plenty of space out on the left-hand side. Duarte can find Tush, and he does. Tush, little clip ball over the top for Diaz, who just lifts it over the goalkeeper and gets his 13th of the season. And Jose Diaz has started this season off in fantastic goal-scoring form. Levante looking to get themselves back into this game, though, uh, and they do come down the right-hand side with Sassi. Sassi's a forced inside, needs an option. Finds a Belmonte. Belmonte with the ball, which is absolutely wasted. Ribeiro just calmly hands it back to Julian Frenda, who, let's be honest, I expected he was going to run out of the way of that because that's the type of goalkeeper he is. Uh, he throws it out to Schemiger, finds Ribeiro. Moving over halfway now, Ribeiro. He's got, uh, he's got Lara gone over the top. The defender's lost him. Lara brings it down into Diaz. Diaz gets his 14th of the season, assisted by Carlos Lara there. Goalkeeper maybe should have saved it, really. It was a little bit of a tame effort from Diaz, but we're not going to complain, are we? And a highlight straight from the Levante kickoff. Is it going to be four for Real Madrid or are Levante going to get one back? They've uh, they've given the ball straight back to us again. And it's Schemiger. Now Ribeiro down this right-hand side again. Finds a Diaz on a hat-trick, of course. Looks to switch the play to Nicuesa. Has Nicuesa got the pace to get past the defender? No, checks back. Finds Diaz for his hat-trick. It's took a deflection off the defender. Gone over the goalkeeper. And Jose Diaz has a first-half hat-trick here. Frenda with the goal kick. Approaching half time, it goes along. The uh, Munoz does win it for, for Levante, and it's now Alberto. Back to Munoz, to Kokov on the left hand side. Comes inside to Belmonte. It's cut out by Duarte, though. Lara feeds Nequeza. Nequeza forward towards Diaz, who gets there. Can he get his fourth of the game? He's he's put his foot through it, and it's gone over the bar. But straight from that goal kick, are Levante just going to give us the ball back again? They are, uh, uh, yeah, they are. No, they're not. No, they've actually won it. But uh, we do win it in the end. Nequeza, he's lost out to Mamol there. Mamol finds Sassi now Belmonte Mamol again who has now just given us the ball back giving it straight to Banda and Duarte finds Badiola into Hurtado it's a little bit of a hospital pass though from, from Badiola and the Levante players do manage to get it back through Mamol on this right hand side comes back towards Belmonte slide and tackle from the Quasa doesn't get the ball that's a great pass and that's a great goal there from Levante that pass through from Belmonte I think it was was absolutely fantastic defence splitting and Levante do have a goal back in this game this pass it was Belmonte. This pass is awesome. Absolutely awesome. He's, he's took out six defenders there with that one pass. We're still looking to add to Levante's misery before half-time, though. It's Nequeza looking to feed Diaz again. Cut out by the defender, but the defenders have made a little bit of hash of it. And now Schemiger wins that header. Hurtado, Badiola into Banda. Banda finds Duarte. Duarte with the ball over the top towards Nequeza. On his chest for the finish. Rafael Nequeza gets his 10th of the season. He makes it 5-1 to Real Madrid on the stroke of half-time. And that is the way it stays till half-time, guys. 5-1 at the break is, is a thoroughly, thoroughly dominant performance. We're looking to keep piling that misery on Levante, though. We're coming down the left-hand side this time. Cross into the box towards Lara. Headed clear by the defender. And Gallardo is going to pick it up for Levante. Driving forward down this left-hand side. White shirt's trying to get back to him. He's got some pace as he finds the attacker in the middle. The attacker's absolutely fluffed his lines. After that great work down the left from Gallardo. I don't know whether he was offside though, the attacker. I guess we're not going to find out. Approaching the final 10 minutes, Nequeza with this free kick towards the back post. And I think it was uh, it was Schemiger who got his head on it, but it's a, it's a good save there from, from Flake uh, to claim that one. To deny is our sixth. Uh, Flake goes long. Is he going to give the ball straight back to us? There's three Real Madrid defenders around the one man there, but uh, somehow they managed to come away with the ball. And it's Mamol down this right hand side. Finds Chuck Woody. Chuck Woody. Good tackle from Badiola, but only comes back to Mamol. Mamol looking for the second of the game for Levante, and they've got it. Carlos Mamol gets Levante second, and uh, it's a bit poor defensively from, from a Real Madrid point of view. Really conceding a couple of goals. That's a great tackle, but there's no follow-up. Who's number 14? Duarte stood on his heels, not watching the uh, the run from Mamol there. And that's the way it stays till full-time, guys. All the damage done in the first half, really by Real Madrid all five goals for us coming in that first half disappointing to concede the two but you uh, Levante you can see in the second half they did actually perform better than we did in, in terms of match stats and uh, chances and stuff like that they were much much better in the second half right I let the uh, the, the evening fixtures play out here in, in Spain including Barcelona and Atleti Madrid Barcelona got a draw with Elche which is, is, is a shocking result especially at Camp Nou uh, and Atleti Madrid lost to Atletico Bilbao, which again is a, a 
poor, poor results. So with all the top three, four playing at least ten games, we've actually found ourselves six points clear at the top, which is uh, which is great. And we, we've got a little bit of a cushion now over Barcelona. Currently at nine points, they do still have a game in hand, so it could potentially be six points. But we do have a bit of daylight at the top of the table now, though, guys. We are going to take on Barcelona today's second game, which could be a, a really, really big game. It is at Camp Nou. They do still play at Camp Nou. It's in a couple of days' time, so I'll... I'll click ahead and we'll, we'll get on to the, the Barca game. Right then guys, we've made it to the Barca game uh, where hopefully we can continue uh, the, the form that we've started the season off in. This is probably our biggest game of the season particularly away at Camp Nou like I said, uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough and I, I see absolutely no reason to change the squad particularly uh, after uh, the immense result there the putting five goals past Levante in the first half. I do have Obviously, substitute bench to work with in case we need it. Uh, hopefully, we don't. In fact, one change I will make is I'll bring Weidman in for, for Carlos Lara. And we'll go with that. So, that's the squad. It's going to be Frenda, Ribeiro, Semiga, Banda and Tush. Duarte, Badiola, Hurtado, Aviedman, Nequeza and Diaz. Now, let's go and get this, this result against Barca. And we're underway. Six minutes in. We've, we've made a good start here so far. We, we, we do have the first highlight as well. The ball clipped long towards Diaz, but Cara gets back to him. Finds Nicolini in goal. Nicolini goes long. Should be easy for our defenders here. And Schemiger does win it. Finds Hurtado. Badiola. Now Duarte. He's got Tush outside of him. Nicuesa ahead of him. If he decides he wants to use him. He looks like he's going by himself. Does Tush. Comes back inside now. Gives the ball to Badiola. On to Duarte. Duarte clips it over. Looking for Weidman. But it's a poor pass. That's easily cut out by the Barcelona defence. And now they look to build something from the back through Stolz. Stolz bringing the ball forward. We're struggling to get back to him here. The number five Hurtado. Hasn't quite got the legs and Stoll's still going. Now cuts back, comes back to the edge of the area. And Michael, now Portillo. Ayosa Portillo gets the opening goal of the game for Barcelona. Seven minutes on the clock. That's not a great start. And we've advanced 10 minutes further on. It's Barca with the ball again. The Quasar goes diving in there. Doesn't get the ball though. Barca coming forward. Stoll's wins that header, I think. No, Ribeiro got it in. He calmly headed it back to Frenda. Uh, can we build something from the back though this time? It's Schemiger. Finding Ribeiro into Hurtado. Now uh, Weidman. Hurtado again. Ball over the top falls. Diaz. This is the opportunity. Diaz. Can he finish? Yes, he can. Jose Diaz gets his 16th of the season. And levels El Clasico at the new Camp. And that's the way it stays till half-time, guys. You can see that we are marginally on top, I would say. Barca have had more of the ball. Uh, XG hours is better. Shots, we're, we're doing better. Uh, things like that. Passes can... Completed. Barca again have had more of the ball, so they've completed more passes than us. I would be happy with a draw at the new Camp, really, against Barca. I think that would be a good result. So with an hour gone then, we've made a quick change on the left-hand side. Nicuesa is not having the best of games, so we have brought Hernandez on for Nicuesa, but we, it's been a very quiet first, second half, I beg your pardon. And this is our first highlight of that second half, and it is Barcelona looking to feed the ball through the middle, but Diaz does well to, to, to get there. Moving the ball around nicely, Barcelona through the Real Madrid midfield and they're still coming forward. Can we pinch this ball? I think we did with Hurtado. Diaz gets the second ball, looks for Hernandez. Hernandez controls it nicely ahead of the Barca defender. Looks to take him on, comes back inside instead, finds Duarte. Duarte with the ball for Diaz, the goalkeeper's off his line. Diaz's angle was a little bit wide in the end. I think he was given offside anyway, so it wouldn't have counted. And we're into injury time at the end of the game. Five minutes of injury time. Hopefully Barca don't go and score. But we've got Ribeiro off the, off the pitch with an injury at the minute, as you can see. Uh, we clip that forward looking for Weidman, but uh, nothing comes of it. And now this is where Ribeiro is out of position here. Uh, Barca could punish us. Surely he's offside. Lino has got his flag up. We'll get that VAR check. Please be offside. He looked offside. Has to be offside. Yes, it is offside. I, I I thought it was offside. I could see him down here by himself. Here he is, look. He's a mile off. He's a mile off. What have been, why can't we just trust the lino for that? Really, but we're, we're approaching the end of this injury time at the end of the game now. Uh, and we have held on for a draw. It was a very, very even game in the end. Uh, but like I said, I think a draw in this, uh, in this fixture at the new Camp is a good result. So after that game guys, 11 games into the season, we are 28 points from 11 games. Unfortunately that draw has reduced our deficit to Valencia to just the four points. 
which is fine. We're still nine clear of Barcelona, who are obviously going to be the biggest rivals for us this season. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a decent result at the way at the, at the new camp there. Uh, we'll be back again in around what ten games uh, time, guys. Where we'll be two quarters of the way through the season, approximately halfway through the season. And we'll take on two more games then in Spain and see if we can maintain that gap at the top. But guys, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit that thumbs up button for me. You know it does help me out massively and I do greatly appreciate it. Any comments as well on the series, again, I greatly appreciate it. Please let me know what you think. We're nearly at the end, nearly at the end. Uh, but I'll see you all next time, guys. So cheers, guys, and I'll see you later.